The highly anticipated WAN 2.2 just released and it did not disappoint. All these videos show better prompt adherence, better motion, and much better camera and scene control. The best thing is that the main WAN 2.1 LoRa's still work so we get to keep the benefits of all the speed ups. Let me show you how to set it up step by step for low VRAM users. Let's get into it. Let's just quickly start with what WAN 2.2 has upgraded. They've added a whole bunch of new prompt controls baked in. So now you can control things like the aesthetics, dynamics, uh, and even stylizations. So a lot of the aesthetic controls come down to lighting and how you want to adjust those. Also compositions and what lens you use. All of that is kind of known to WAN now. So you can use generic terms that usually photographers or cinematographers can use and it'll understand those. And then additionally for dynamic motion control, you can also prompt things for camera movement and those will all be understood by WAN as well. So for example, things like lenses, you can tell WAN you want to use a medium lens shot or a wide lens shot things like that, and it'll all understand. Or alternatively, you can just tell it what kind of shot you want. So instead of using lens, you can tell it extreme close up, close up, medium, etc. You can now prompt for emotion in your video, and it'll try and generate that. So you have things like angrily, fear, happy, sadly. So all of these keywords will help in the end generation. And then finally, just quickly, on basic camera movement, some of these things were only available with LoRa's before. I'm sure some of the more specialized LoRa's can still do it a bit better, but now generally you can just prompt for these right in the video. So things like pullbacks, close-ups and dolly-ins, moving left to right, all that kind of stuff is there. Uh, and even more advanced ones where you want a shaky handheld cam uh, or a tracking shot, which is particularly useful or cool things like arc shots. Um, so a lot of things that are built in now that you can experiment with. Okay, now let's get all the files that we need for WAN 2.2 and the workflows. The first one that we need, obviously, is WAN 2.2. Again, I'm using an 8 gig VRAM laptop GPU. So the community has already created them within one day, which is pretty impressive. And you'll find a full set here, and I'll share the link in the video description down below. But on this Hugging Face page, you'll find uh, a whole bunch of different quant values. Again, I have eight gigs, so I've been using the Q4 just to make sure that I can run it and do the proper testing. Um, I think it, I can probably get by with the Q5 as well. And if obviously if you have more VRAM, then you can go up to Q6 or Q8. And if you have less, you can try out the Q2 or Q3. Links I've seen some people use the Q3 and the results have been pretty good still. So really just grab the one that, that will fit your VRAM. The other big difference between WAN 2.2 and 2.1, at least for the image to video model, is that you need two of these GIFs. So you need the high noise one, uh, and it's a 14 billion parameter one. So for me, for example, I would grab the Q4 high noise one, and in addition, I would need the Q4 low noise one. And these get paired up, and I'll show you later in the workflow, but these get paired up together to produce one video generation. So grab the quants that you need and put it in the UNet folder, just like all the other GGUFs before. And then next we'll move on to the other important bit, which is the, the Light X2V LoRa. So this is the same LoRa that was used in WAN 2.1, and we can continue to use this in WAN 2.2, which will greatly affect the speed of the generation. By default, WAN 2.2 generations are 20 steps, uh, so it takes a little bit longer. But with the Light X2V, you can get it down to six steps for a really good generation. And all the videos in the beginning intro are, were all done on six steps. So from Kijai's Hugging Face page, you want to grab the correct one, which is the I2V one. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ranks here. The one I've been using in my testing is just rank 32. You can also go up to rank 64 or rank 128. So yeah, just get the one either 32 and up and then experiment um, however you like. The last set of files come from the Comfy UI page for WAN 2.2. So they've updated uh, one of their guides here. Actually, there's nothing new for WAN 2.2 unless you're using the 5B model. But because we're using the 14B model, you can just use the same text encoder that you've previously used for WAN 2.1. Um, and you can grab it here if you don't have it. You also have to use WAN 2.1 VAE for the 14B model. So you can grab that here or just reuse the one that you previously have. The one 2.2 VAE is only being used for the 5B model. Uh, and it's actually quite a bit slower. So right now you don't need to use that. Put these two files in the correct folders and that's it. Okay, now we're back in Comfy UI. Here's just an overall view of the workflow itself. Not super complicated, although it looks quite big, but I'll go through each of these nodes um, when I go through the whole workflow. 
So one of the first things you have to do before you start is to update your Comfy UI. So once you bring up Manager, you can update Comfy UI by clicking Update All or Update Comfy UI. Update All, I think, will also upgrade update all the custom nodes you have. Just make sure you run this, then do a restart, and then refresh the browser window when it's all done. You want to be on 0.3.46, and you can check this in a couple of ways. So one is in Help about Comfy UI, and you should see what version you're on. So mine is listed here. And another way to make sure you have the right one is you can also see if you have the one templates. So in the workflow, browse templates, video, and you should see the one 2.2 ones here. Now I've used the one 2.2 14B image to video as a base uh, and then expanded it with all the necessary extra nodes. So you won't have to download this one and you can download the one I have uh, linked in the video description. Okay, let's go over the workflow itself. So first we'll start on the very left with all the different loaders. The default one is the load diffusion model. I've bypassed those and then added the two from the GIGAF uh, custom node. So what you'll notice is there's actually two sets of models that are being loaded for this workflow. In one of them, you put the high noise, and then in the other, you put the low noise. So what happens is in the video generation sampler, it'll actually split your steps into two and then do half of it on the high noise and then the second half on the low noise. So if you had six steps, for instance, you would set it up so that three steps would be done on the high noise. And the high noise is supposed to give you the dynamic motions, compositions, all that kind of stuff. And the last three steps will use the low noise, which will then fill in all the fine details. So this part is different from one 2.1. So from here, the two models go through the usual speed ups that I add. And again, if you don't have Sage Attention, just look up how to install Sage Attention uh, in the Torch settings, uh, and then you can add these two nodes. If you can't get it working, or if you don't have it installed, you can again, you can always just bypass all four of these. And then you can run the model. The model will still work, uh, but it'll just be a little bit slower. Okay, and then next, continuing on the model chain, you have the lower loader model only nodes. These two, you put in the light X2V, so the same LoRa, you add it to both. Uh, for the top, for the high noise path, you set it at three, and then the low noise pass, you set it at 1.5. So these are the, the numbers that people have been, been experimenting with. These seem to give good results. For me, it gives pretty good results, so I've stuck with these ones. Of course, you can always just experiment and see if you get better results with other numbers. And then from the LoRa's, both of these go into the shift nodes, uh, and these are default at eight. And then each one of these models will actually go into a K sampler of its own. So the top half with the high pass goes into the first K sampler, and then the low pass one goes into the second K sampler. And these two K samplers are connected via the latents. Uh, you also have a couple other things plugging in here, the positive and negative prompts into the same ones into both. Um, and then the latent image from down below, which I'll explain. So now if we take a look at just underneath, we have the clip loaders, the text encoder, and the VAE loaders. These are just a general one from Comfy UI. Uh, so you put your text encoder in here, make sure you have one selected, and then device as CPU if, if your CPU can run it. And then the VAE, you use the 2.1 VAE, make sure that that one is selected. For the prompt connections, the text encoder gets hooked into the positive and negative prompt. In this case, because we're using light X2V, the negative prompt isn't actually being used, but it is being used in the default, which is why it's there. I also haven't had time to see if the one video neg has been up updated and if it works for, for one 2.2 yet. So I've just left it at one without a negative prompt. But so far the generation seem okay. So the positive and the negative prompts actually get fed into the one image to video. And then from the image to video, it then gets fed into the case samplers. The other thing connecting the one image to video is obviously your load image. So for an I2V uh, model, you have to load your image here. The image goes through an image resize, which I've added, just to make it a little bit easier uh, to set your resolution on the output. So you'll set it on the image resize, that gets passed to one image to video, and then that resolution gets fed into the case sampler. The 14B model for one 2.2 still uses 16 frames per second. So the length that you set here in this node uh, has to be multiples of 16 plus one. So 81 frames is the usual five seconds for one. Obviously, if your GPU is more powerful or if you have more VRAM, you can also up the resolution on your image generation. Uh, you can definitely do widescreen. So 832 by 480, 
um, or if you want a portrait, it'd be 480 by 832. Or you can generate 720p images by putting 1280 by 708, I think is on the one 2.2. But you don't need to go higher than 720p. I think the models are just trained on 480p or 720p as the, the maximum. So now we move into the case sampler. So again, the first case sampler is for the high noise pass and the second one is for the low noise. So what you see is that the high noise one has a seed, obviously, to denoise. Um, so this one looks more like the usual case sampler settings that you would put. You have a seed, you can either set it to randomize or fixed if you're trying to keep the same seed. Steps, six, because you're using light X 2 v um, If you want better quality, you can also do eight or 10 steps, but just keep it a multiple of two. CFG is one, sampler and scheduler. I've been using Euler and Simple. Uh, some people have been using UniPC. I think you can experiment a little bit with these to see which ones you prefer. And then the last two are slightly different than 1, 2.1. So you have a start step at zero, end step at three. So this means out of the six steps, you only do the first three steps here, and then you pass the leftover noise as well. All of this gets fed into the second case sampler, and you'll notice you don't need a seed for this one because it's taking input from the first one. You match the steps, so six. CFG is the same, same sampler, same scheduler. And then the bottom part, instead of starting at zero, you, just, you pick it up and start it at three, and then end it at 10,000, or you can put six, but 10,000 you can just leave there. And then set the second one to disable. Then when it finishes a combined six steps, it'll go through the VAE decode, and then into the video combined, which is quite normal. So here's a sample test video that I ran. I had the image of two samurai on a train and the, the prompt was just for them to be an intense sword fight while the trains are moving. Um, so you can see it kind of does that. So the fighting is a lot better than the old one 2.1 uh, fight sequences or a lot of the other video generator fight sequences. Um, so this one looks quite good and they're not kind of jumping all over the place or weird physics and, and weird movements. And I know some of you are interested in the speed. So for me, you know, that last generation, this is a 480 by 480 by 81 frames. So it's not huge, um, but per iteration, I was getting 23 seconds. And then the overall time to execute was 181 seconds. So three minutes exactly. But this was a, a follow-up, so I wasn't loading any new models or anything like that. So this was like a second or third run. But in general, the iterations per second are quite standard at uh, 23 for me. So pretty quick. Okay, let's take a look at some of the video comparisons to WAN 2.1 and also some new generations and reviews of the WAN 2.2 outputs. In the first one, I had an old WAN 2.1 output of an alien standing in front of the Area 51 sign in front of a bunch of uh, military people. So in the first one, it's actually not bad. Um, the prompt, I think, was the alien was laughing and then pointing at the, the people behind. So I don't know if they're laughing or just kind of talking, but in the first one, uh, 1.2.1, he points, but uh, he doesn't turn around. And also the people in the background aren't moving too much. It's okay, it's not a bad generation. The second one on 1.2.2 is, is definitely better. Uh, the alien turns around, starts pointing at them. Before that, all the the military guys are kind of just shuffling around, looking around. 1.2.2 kind of stuck to the prompt a little bit better from the turning around and pointing. But yeah, in, in my preference, I would prefer the 2.2 version. Uh, then the next one is actually one from the previous video. So the 1.2.1 one was uh, a light X2V plus the PUSA. Um, and that one was already better than just the, the base one that, that was generated out of 1.2.1. And here we had the subtle movements of the head when he's playing. Obviously, the fingers and things like that, and people walking around in the back. But in the 2.2, it's just much more natural. Like, he has a lot more movement. His body tilts uh, much like a musician would. Um, but there's just a lot more going on with people walking around in the backgrounds um, and the flags waving and things like that, which I noticed that is not waving here. Um, so that's cool to see. Again, 1 2.2 is just the better generation in, in my opinion. Then a few standalone 1 2.2s that are not compared against 2.1. Um, this one, these two sets are just testing kind of camera motion. The first one, the lady on the motorcycle, that was supposed to be a zoom into her face. The, the camera zoom in definitely is working as intended. And then obviously along with everything else, her hair is flying from the wind and things like that. So uh, not bad. The second one was um, actually prompting the camera to do a pullback and then fly up like a drone to do an aerial shot. Uh, and this one did it almost exactly like I was imagining it. It does do a slight pullback and then it goes straight up in the air, points down and then overlooks the battlefield itself. So that one's pretty cool.
And then for the last two, uh, a couple of tests on just kind of facial expressions. So for this shot, it's the Indiana Jones shot. Uh, the prompt itself was he gives a smirk and then pulls out a lightsaber. Um, so he does both. Smirk is a, a little bit creepy, but he does do a smirk. And then he pulls out uh, a lightsaber as well. And I like how he pulls out a uh, cross guard Kylo Ren style one. The second one is um, the girl looks back and then starts running away from the dinosaurs. Her face uh, becomes fearful. So again, Wan 2.2 is really good at prompt adherence. She looks back uh, and then starts running forward with the dinosaurs chasing her. Her face expression does change. Um, it's The video is a little too short to see if it's fearful. I think it is okay. It's kind of fearful. Um, better than just her keeping her smile on. So again, yeah, I mean, from all these tests, Juan has been pretty good at prompt adherence in any camera motion that I've been trying. Hopefully these give you a taste of how Juan 2.2 performs, uh, especially on a low VRAM system. It's still pretty usable. Any of these generations still need to be upscaled, etc. if you want to keep them. If you found this video helpful, give it a like. The community is still testing Wan 2.2 like crazy, so I'm sure there's going to be lots of stuff happening. So if you want to keep updated on anything that I'm trying out that the community is also testing, then just click the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.